It is about the League of Ireland we're turning our attention to now. It's 8.50. Vinnie Perth is with us. Vinnie, good morning. How are you? Morning. How are we? Uh, Brent Pope used to have a saying, never give a sucker an even break. And for about four weeks, Shamrock Rovers looked like a little bit like they were suckers and everybody kept giving them even breaks and didn't take the opportunity. And like the Terminator, they're back. Yeah, I I think you've been calling for this. You want Rovers to struggle. I, well, I like, can hear it in your voice. Just what? Because I know they're gonna, I know they're gonna reel off 10, 11 victories in a row at some point. Yeah. And what you want is for that not to be a ten point gap at the end of that, so that week in week out. See, my mind worked different. So when I grew up, I was a Steve Davis fan, and everyone in the house and was like, <laughs> "Why? Like why? Like yes. Jimmy White is the here?" And I was like, "No, it's I want the best teams to win. What? I hate the underdogs winning." This explains a lot, Vinny. Why Nobody are you? love Davis. Ah, oh, I love Steve Davis, and I'm, why? And then Stephen Hendry after that, I'm going. Yeah, but now I have become a Ronnie O'Sullivan fan. You'd be glad to oh, also yeah, win. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he wins every time. Finally. The best have to win. But look, I think um, we've got... It's a fascinating league at the moment. I hear you when it comes to the, the Rovers stuff. It looks like they're about to kick in. Um, I was at the Rovers Balls game on Friday and they were outstanding. It uh, must be said. And I think um, I spoke about... Rovers and Derry here a couple of weeks ago and Graham Bork's performance in the first half was and, and I have to be careful with my language a lot of people speak very highly of League of Ireland players when you need to be careful about where it is and we've been you have been discussing say Real Madrid and Chelsea this morning but Graham Bork's performances this season I think have been uh, from a League of Ireland perspective ex- exceptional and he's he's been a real sort of catalyst for them but it's not just that it's the squad everything about them it was a brilliant performance on Friday night and a worrying one for Bowles at the same time they were so outclassed by, by Rovers on the night That's why Bowles bouncing back immediately was incredibly important for the league Yeah absolutely and um, I didn't see it coming because I was that worried about the performance um, on Friday I thought Rovers were so far ahead of them they looked a little bit tired I looked at someone like Keith Buckley who Keith, Keith went and travelled for a year last year in the middle of his career and I looked and went he looks a little bit tired a little bit off but the way he bounced back on, on, on Friday I thought um, albeit I know R- Rory Higgins complained about the penalty decision I thought balls were worthy winners when I watched the game back and um, it was an exceptional performance and, and I think I think people don't understand how difficult it is to go Friday Monday and that's why I give huge credit to the manager and them this, on them performances when someone bounces back on a Monday you've got to give Declan Vine huge credit for that performance on, on Monday night that was that was excellent Jack Byrne is someone we give a lot of credit to of course on the, on the show but um, in terms of his form this season it's been it's been at a level that, that he's reached in plenty of years but he, he almost seems to be taken to the next level you mentioned Graham Burke but, but Byrne has been so important to that yeah I think I think when I go back to Friday night which seems like a, a lifetime ago in League of Ireland terms um, himself and Graham Bork looked a level above now you also have to add into that so someone like and, and we've referenced to here about horses for courses so, someone like Dylan Watts sort of went under the radar a little bit in the game but he's done a, a phenomenal job on Friday night and w- was very quiet Neil Ferrugia is I would say I would say Neil Ferrugia is very close to an Ireland call up that's how good and particularly in that position and whether he needs to leave Shamrock Rovers at the end of the season not to get that call up that'll be interesting but remember he was someone who was part of that great 21 squad that Stephen first took mm. over I think he scored the first goal for Stephen in the 21s I think he he's at a crossroad but to go back to Jack Bourne Jack Bourne I would have been sort of almost not critical but he hadn't reached the levels of he is of he had done he's very close to that now and I think that's a scary proposition for the rest of the league because he is he's he's up there as the best player in the league Can Byrne and Burke get called back into the, the Irish squad at any point do you think or is that ship sailed? No it's a, it's a really difficult one now I think back in the day I could understand the argument for now I think we've developed so many players when you look at our midfield now you look at Noy Malumbi uh, McGrath what he's doing and, and he's only on the fringes Alan Brown can play in there you've got Cullen mm. it, it is a lot more difficult now and um it, it will be a lot more difficult. They'll have to do something exceptional throughout the summer in terms of European football. But 
the advantage they would have over a League One, a League Two player trying to break into that squad is they'll have a, a real showcase around Europe. If Rovers go on and have another campaign in in a, in a group stages, that will definitely help them. Yeah, I think it's great that we're talking about this team and the level of performance that you're talking about. And it's not a foregone conclusion already, nine games in, the way it has been in some recent seasons. So that's definitely a testimony to the rising tide. Just to stick on this point for a moment, is this the first time that they've all been fit together at the same time for a run of games? Like over the last couple of years that we've had Burke and Byrne and Ferrugia and obviously Watts like um, I think I think it no they've had them at different stages I think Graham Bork uh, is one was it, Graham Bork's an interesting one because his form goes up and down he doesn't tend to la- like in, in the Derry game earlier in the season for first 45 minutes he, he looked above everyone else on the pitch second half his form dipped I think Graham struggles to play 90 minutes He's, he seems to have and again you don't when you don't work with the player you need to be careful but he, I don't know whether he has injury or something in the background but um, yeah I, I just think Neil Ferrugia has because has, he's that quick winger he's been crippled with hamstring injuries and hope and touch wood, I hope he's over that now because he's someone I tried to sign a few years back and I, I still put that down to one that I really, really missed and I think he would have been exceptional for Dundalk as a winger. But as a wing back, um, he's someone that's really exciting. So, yeah, a couple of them have come back together around the same time. Jack Bourne had that back injury throughout last year. But um, they all look really fit at the moment. The squad looks really, really strong. And Gary O'Neill missed... Uh, Friday night and it wasn't a big loss because of the strength and depth in that squad What was the general sense in the aftermath that um, the game had put its best foot forward it's a Friday night it's on Virgin for the first time The it's packed and we got goals it was kind of a high quality Yeah unfortunately we missed uh, in that game we missed a big referee uh, decision and controversy so it was actually refereed really really good to be fair look I, I watched the game back on Virgin to see because it was at a live you know it was it was an excellent an excellent production. They went back to a studio. Uh, Brian Kerr and Ian Morris done a really really good job. The good side of it was the promotion of it throughout the whole week. Um, not talking about but even like things like Ireland I am weatherman who mm. tends to roam. Well, he roamed around Delhi Mount Park. It's just small things like that that yeah. that they do. They done really really well. And you've got to give. Uh, Virgin or TV3 as I called them last week huge credit for that that was they they, they promoted the game excellently and I think people uh, t- t- people bought into it I don't know what the viewing figures are like and hey I wouldn't imagine they're huge but you have to start somewhere you know uh, well that's it and look it was up against the uh, rugby at the same time and that's unfortunate but that won't always be the case and you know you've got to as we keep saying you have to build familiarity with the players and build familiar- familiarity with the styles that are going to make the fights and mm. like that's it's a long, slow, steady build to a point where you're an overnight success after five years of hard work. Yeah, well, it feels like 40, 50 years. But yeah, I think we're. I think there's a lot of good things happening. Again, uh, I always say don't don't take it for granted. Though you know, don't take don't take people for granted. Don't take um, um, like overcharging people because you can. Don't put people out in the pissings of rain and expect them to keep coming back and got to get a house in order and, and we're slowly but surely doing that but there's there's still ways to go and um, but there's, there is green shoots there's no doubt about it Will Derry's home form be the, the killing of them? That's four wins from nine I, like you're just reading the comments from Murray Higgins after the match the Bowes match he was obviously given out about the penalty and he went on to give out about the last four home games and decisions that went against them as well don't want to get bogged down in the officiating again like we did last week but the home form generally from Derry has been a bit of a concern for Higgins yeah, it, it's there's, there's two things. One is um, there was a they played Drogheda on Friday and Drogheda beat them one nil and that was a real shock result. And there was two sending offs in that game that were just mm. wrong decisions. And you've got to call them what they are. You've got to I protected referees last week. So, but when when decisions are wrong, you've got to say they're wrong. To two sending offs, one for Drogheda and one for Derry. But the home form on that pitch. Um, I'm someone who's been involved ten, nine, ten years at Dundalk, and all. One thing that took away from what we did was the state of our pitch at home. And ironically, I think our away form was always better. We preferred to play in grass, but the pitch is really difficult up there, and um, it just it, it's very hard to explain to people. It's a big pitch, and it's an astro pitch as well, and it's just not good, and it's not conducive to the type of football Derry want to play. I don't think, and um, it's certainly a problem for them, and. 
you add on top of that the injury list they have um, you wonder is the pitch I mean, needed there, you know like, well it is in, I, I mean in, in the NFL the richest players union in the world is like desperately agitating to get away from the plastic pitches to the the astral pitches to um, there's, there's a couple of sides to that one is when, when I when I played um, we didn't play I grew up there wasn't AstroTurf pitches. The modern kid now is being brought up on AstroTurf pitches, so the likes of the IT bands and all of this stuff, they're well used to it. All the players are struggling on pitches because they're not used to it, they haven't been brought up on it. So most kids playing under 9, 10, 12, 13 football now are probably playing on AstroTurf. We probably need them in this country because of the, the, weather. the weather we yeah. have. And remember, the other side of this country is, I was chatting to someone the other day involved with Cherry Orchard coaching there. And he's saying, we're about to shut down the league for a couple of months. <laughs> Look at the weather. He's standing in, and he was training the other night in, well, like said, convince, two or three. You're trying to convince your kids to go, and it's lashing rain outside, and you're like, I mean, I don't really want to go. Yeah, and, and he's a guy, uh, Alan Murphy played League of Ireland for years, uh, when it was winter football. No problem standing out in the cold, but he said, you're looking, you're trying to coach kids. It's freezing, and we're going to shut down our grounds for the summer. Yeah, it's just mental where you could play two or three games a week. I don't really understand how the decision was made and all the all the the, the cracking of the eggs to make the omelette happened, and now the, it's all dissolved again. Yeah, it's it's called politics and Irish football, and uh, we we could be here all day trying to explain it. We um, get nowhere. A quick word about uh, about shells. Uh, I had a friend who went to the shells UCD game, and after was like, "This is the, I'm not sure about this." In fairness, Duffer did say that the performance was so bad he took it home. It's the first time that he's done that. And they did come out and they did improve. So, um. Yeah, I was at that game on Friday night in Tolka and it was actually, it's funny, uh, I was trying to sum it up in my own head. Um, some of the games and what's going on in the league is really confusing at the moment because um, it, w- it wasn't a great game of football. Pitch wasn't brilliant, but it was in a, it was a brilliant game of football. So, Explain that one. I, I can't. It was really exciting. Sligo were very good for 45 minutes. That was Monday night. Sorry, because Friday, Friday, Friday was... Um, Friday the was... Belfield was, yeah, by all accounts, one of the worst games that anybody's yeah. ever seen. <laughs> well, well, there's been a few of them, and you get them in football, no matter what level you're playing at. But but to be fair, to they, they backed it up on on with a huge win. But um, again, Duffer being any other, any other manager... There was, you know, it wouldn't have made the headlines that you know he had a bad weekend over the Easter, and that's what's great. It's box office when when Duffer speaks, but um, in fairness, he bounced back. But UCD is a tough place to go. It is a it is a tough environment to go and play football in. It's it's sort of quite open. Not many people there. No atmosphere. Um, no atmosphere. Yeah. And it, it is Whereas tough. Talca, the atmosphere sounds great. Yeah, no, and it was really good. And that's what I say to you. I don't think it was a brilliant game of football. Um, in terms of from a technical point of view but actually uh, I was glued to my seat I really enjoyed Sligo and Shells on, on Monday night um, Shells or Sligo should have won the game uh, Duffer made three subs at half time and went for it and they got back into the game bizarre on goal and they probably deservedly won the game on their second half performance and the manager deserves huge credit for that performance and it was a big win for them big win there's six points between second and ninth it's a bit like um, the relegation battle in the Premier League at the moment but that's the level of excitement that you want where there's a sense of jeopardy heading into every game going and if, if teams do make those changes at half time and try and win games yeah. it's going to continue to well well, it's huge like you look at Cork this week um, they had a great win against Dundalk and I think it's important for Cork they play UCD this week that they they back that up with another win and that second last is a relegation playoff and the problem for the Premier Division clubs at the moment is you've got Galway and Waterford going to fill that spot most likely full-time clubs it's really a position normally you would you would say the Premier Division club is red hot favourite to win that playoff game this year it's going to be different so you do not want to be there so it's it, it is crucial that teams pick up points and we've also seen We've seen Dundalk lose three games in a week and go from potentially second toward to, to toward from the bottom. And you've seen Pats go from under a bit of pressure to winning three games in a week. And it's just it's just a bit of madness at the yeah. moment. Do you do you use the word crisis yet to, to discuss Dundalk? Because you mentioned that the three games in a week that they've lost, it's Derry at home on that Astro Pitch at Oriel Park this Sunday afternoon for them. Maybe Joe Biden's visit to the town might inspire them to, to a couple of results, who knows? But it, it, it's certainly... It's certainly worrying. So the Cork City defeat on Monday night, 1-0, as you mentioned, 
the two undefeated at Sligo then on Friday and 4-0 albeit they had a man sent off as well in that game against Rovers but there's two sides to the Dundalk story one is um, on on the pitch against Cork I watched the game on LOI TV and it was a struggle it was a in fairness there was Hurricane Charlie down the pitch behind Cork's back and then Dundalk came out the second half and it was just calm just typical Irish weather you're like <laughs> as a player you're like just get through half time we'll have this and then but the performance no no shots on goal it was really lethargic um, their, their injuries again you go to the pitch but they, they've had John Mountney came back to the club over last year too he's you know bad knee injury Robbie Benson albeit he's suspended mom's had injuries Daniel Kelly's had hamstring injuries Pa Hooban is missing so they're the players and, and they're the League of Ireland players who know how to go into Cork and pick up a result missing them is huge for me the crisis is probably off the pitch since the new owners have gone in um, Peak Six were ran out of town and the new owners have gone in and Dundalk have have, have gone backwards like um, how distracting it, is that for, for manager and players do, do they really focus on all, on all of that stuff um, well players probably less so but manager know what's going on like I mean there's no way Stephen O'Donnell has put this squad together as in this is his number one targets now no one ever gets all the number one but this isn't his squad I won't I would say he's probably looking at Pats and the stability of Pats with envy and saying remember Stephen walked out Pats to go to Dundalk he's probably looking at that club and the stability of it Their, Pats's owner is is you know very stable in terms of his investment into the club he's probably looking at that with a bit of envy now and, and I'm not saying he's regretting his decision but he's probably regretting his decision <laughs> these, uh, these fixtures this week uh, Bowes and it's Bowes at home to Pats it's Rovers at home to Shells it's UCD at home to Cork they're tomorrow's games and then on Saturday it's Sligo and Drogheda and then on Sunday afternoon it's Dundalk versus Derry City and in their own way they're all pretty big games and, that, and that's the beauty of the league we have at the moment um, the, the Bowles and Pats game is fascinating I think if Bowles win that it, it's a real statement win we're quarter the way through the season you've got to remember the real statement win um, Pats play Bowles and then Rovers in the next two games they've just you know come away from a little bit of pressure that they were under as a team do you lose two then and all of a sudden is that pressure back on because you'll never find yourself second or third from bottom if they lose yeah. bottom so everything has has something riding on and that's where the league at the moment is is really exciting it's it's really interesting and um, you know Duffer will go up and he will enjoy taking on Rovers and they will be hard to beat they'll be a, a sort of 5-4-1 come on and break us down and um, yeah there's some fascinating games the Dundalk and Derry game has huge um, uh, ramifications because even though it's it's early in the season the psychology of Dundalk if Cork were to beat UCD which probably will happen and Dundalk don't beat Derry they're in that relegation playoff zone yeah and once you're in it mm. yes you're that probably becomes the focus of conversation you're two wins away from being toured but you're yeah. still in the relegation playoff yeah. zone yeah. and that's why fans see it and it's fascinating Al Reddell's departure from, from Derry to go back closer to home for, for to Waterford for personal reasons like it's it seems to be an issue that is going to make Derry suffer for a little bit because he was he was highly highly rated at the Brandywell for sure. Yeah, um, this is a fascinating. I heard Keith Wood yesterday. I only picked up bits of it while I was in the car speaking about you know the the, the keys of uh, what was the word he, he used the key. Well, Leo Cullen had the keys. Yeah. Of, but it's fascinating because the the role of assistant manager is it, it's one that really interests me. So I for eight nine years I was assistant manager Stephen Kenny, but. Even people in my own family didn't even know it was. So it's it's not as important as you think, but it's only important when somebody goes. And you look at the stability of Rovers, like someone like Glenn Cronin is the assistant manager there. And I wouldn't say nobody knows. People in the League of Ireland know. But Glenn hasn't even applied for his pro licence, I know. Or, sorry, he's certainly not on the course. So he's not looking to become a manager. And that's important for Stephen Bradley. And while Stephen will get all the plaudits, and rightly so, being an outstanding manager... Having Glenn beside him, who's someone who's does does the work and would have a certain amount of players on his side, because obviously not everyone in that squad will love Stephen Bradley, and the importance of an assistant manager is huge. And um, some assistant managers have a bigger name than a manager, and or as big, and but it is such an important role, and and 
Rory Lewis and Alan Reynolds, not necessarily from a coaching perspective, I would say from a, a, a right-hand man mm-hmm. and having someone, as he builds that club beside him that he can trust and rely on and know he's going to be there, is absolutely huge. All right, we'll uh, see how that unfolds over the rest of the season. Vinny, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Enjoy the games this weekend.